everybody. Welcome to a new segment here on MLSsoccer.com. The debate team, that's us today at least, we're going to be doing it every week, looking at some of the more controversial topics in the league and around soccer in the world itself. This week, the big controversy, of course, Danny Califf and his red card foul against Julian de Guzman. Let's take a quick look at it first. Number 16, center back, he's playing next to Danny Califf here. Another ball, kind of suspect in a foul. And Julian de Guzman, what was that? Toledo. Jason, what do you think? Red card or no? No, I don't think it's a red card. I think it's a yellow card, especially taking everything into consideration. And the first is the tackle made earlier that only got a yellow card could have been a red card on Toronto. You mean Hasanovic's Correct. tackle, yeah. I'm saying that I understand what Caliph did. He made he in his mind. I made a. I left my keeper out to dry. I hung him up on a on a slow back pass. I need to stop this guy from getting by with with an elbow. He, look, he put his arm out to hold the player back. And the elbow's the part Guzman of the arm. Guzman is small. He's smaller than Caliph. He was kind of hunched over as he came by, and it hit him in the face. But De Guzman made the most of that. If we look today, I guarantee De Guzman doesn't have a huge lump on his face from that elbow to the face. Simon, Simon's itching over here. Itching Great. To get it. What I would say is, what foul are you sanctioning with the yellow card? What's the foul? Is it is it is it is Caliph it, stopping? De Guzman from an opportunity on goal. The foul as the last man no, on defense. No. So you're gonna it's a tell, you're gonna tell me that 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 was a, a clear scoring opportunity for De Guzman and Caleb. So that's my question. What what that? are you sanctioning? What's the foul? It's an obstruction foul. He clearly oh, went to so, hold De Guzman so back. An obstruction foul. So then it's actually just an indirect kick, right? Isn't obstruction indirect? It is. So that's just an indirect free kick from where it happens. So fine. It's not a red card. So yes, it's an indirect Look, kick. What he did was obstruct De Guzman from getting here's my, by. Here's my take on to it. To a ball, sights would have had anyway. We don't know if Sites would have had it. It was a weak pass from Danny Califf, and he acknowledged it was a weak pass by reacting the way he did. Correct. If you actually look at it again, right, it's a blind pass. He doesn't quite look where Sites is. He doesn't hit it the way he wants to. He gets nervous and freaks out, basically, and reaches across, puts his elbow up, right? Now, is he intentionally trying to whack De Guzman as he goes by? No, he's not. But the elbows are up. Every single player in the world now knows. Do not get your elbows up in any sort of situation. He does. He actually makes a movement with his arm. And to me, that's an absolute red card. To, to me, it's a movement with his arm and not a movement with his elbow. He's not trying to elbow the guy. For me, if you're, he wasn't looking at De Guzman. Well, that's fine. If I so punch someone, that's a movement arm. with my arm, Fred, no elbow, right? If I'm the defender there and you're the attacker, yeah. I do the same thing and I hit you in the chest. So it just happened that De Guzman's so small, he's just going to hold the player back, which is a foul, I agree, should be a yellow card, but it's not a red card. He did not, there was no intent. And to me, I'm all for the less officiating, the better. Mm -hmm. I want the referees to not impact the game where they have. When the, you give a red card in the 33rd minute on something that could have gone either way, Jason, you're making, should, you're making you an argument. on the side of yellow. You're making an argument that not even Caliph is making. There were no protests from him on the field. After the game, he, he admitted mea culpa. He what's, said, that's my fault. What's the protest that he can do on the field? There is no protest he can do on the field. He got a red card. But it's they, not like but he can no, talk to but every, into but taking everybody it does. But everybody does protest. It, when I you feel like, him for not doing it. But when you feel like you've been done hard by or hard done by, right? you automatically protest. It happens. It's just weird. And you're the captain of the team, by the way. There's so you're going to at do. least go and talk to him and explain it to me. Please explain it to me. Referee, explain why you're giving me a red card here. That's he didn't fine. do that. He turned and he walked off because he knew it was a red card. Here's the other thing about this, right? You're saying that the referee shouldn't affect the game by giving the red card because that affects the game. But Toronto could argue the referee is affecting the game by not allowing De Guzman the chance to go to goal and possibly get that ball and go right around sites and get a goal. So Toronto would say, you've taken a goal the, away from us. The ball was cl much closer to sights. Even if De Guzman is, is faster, he wasn't going to get that ball. The part about it that, that really irks me is that Toledo was on the other side of midfield when, he, when this play happened. He wasn't close enough to really but, see it, and he didn't do anything to go check with the official on the sideline to say, wait a minute, was it an elbow? Did he hit him in the face? He was sitting on the other side of midfield. Jason, my, my, I, would, I want to get into Kayla's mind as intent, because if he was trying to stop De Guzman from getting to that ball, 
He could have done. There was a number of other ways he could, what yeah. he could have done. The fact that he Wait, went and he led with his forearm. Out there. He led with his elbow. Led with his That's forearm. That's the problem. I disagree with you when you say that there's a lot more he could have done. He made the pass. He's looking back at sights and realizes he he hit the pass well short, and he knows there's a man coming. Right. So when you say there's a lot of things he can do, I disagree. He's looking at sights. The only thing he could do is say, I know he's coming around this side, so let me try yes, to hold him He could have grabbed his jersey. He could have grabbed his jersey. He didn't see him. He's looking at sights, and the guy's coming from behind him. I was no, going to no, no. turn around after, and grab his after, jersey. Look, he could have turned with him, and I actually started running with him. Right? Instead of trying to just go across him. All he does is play the body. He doesn't make any effort to try and turn and run with him, use his shoulder a little bit. Look, I, that play is done I'm, every speaking day. As a, I'm speaking as a defender, right? You can turn and run with him, you can slow him down, you can do a couple of little things like this, you can use your shoulder. There are ways to do it, right? But not to step across him and put your elbow up like this into it. Whether, it, it, whether de Guzman is short or Peter Crouch tall, it really doesn't make a difference because even if it's crouch, you're still whacking him in the chest. Now, the odds of a referee giving, hang on, the odds of a referee giving a red card in that scenario are a little less. I admit that, right? But it's actually by the by my interpretation of it, it should still be a red card. If you throw your elbow into his chest, that should still be a red card. What is lost Everyone's in all this getting... is the fact that the Guzman made a great play to even chase that ball. How many of those balls do they yeah. not even chase? Right. He caused that, he caused the foul to happen, yeah. he caused them to play 10 men, sure. and he created the foul that led to a goal. Well, we have one more we have to debate in this game, especially, obviously ended up Toronto 2-1. to one. The second goal coming on a controversial penalty called by Toledo in this case where O'Brien White coming down and he ends up kicking it just past Sites and Sites takes him down. Let's take a quick look at that. Chad Barrett. Looking for O'Brien White. Sites makes the run after it. Down went White. Brought it out. Toledo's making a run up field and pointing to the spot. We're going to start with you, Simon, on I'm, this one. I'm going to come across as a Toledo fan here, but you have to <laughs> give credit. First time in your life. Because when I saw it in, in, in real time, mm -hmm. I thought the angle, the trajectory of the ball as it, as it left the incident was perhaps where Sites got a hand on it. Mm -hmm. And for him, I, I'm not sure what angle he had on it, but he, he nailed it. But he the, nailed the it. assistant referee also put his flag up right, right away and said, you know, with that assistant referee, <laughs> you know, excitement about he's calling a penalty. So the assistant referee... It was close. Ball. I had to really look at it to see what came first, ball or, or player, sure. uh, what sites got first. It was tough. It was a tough call. Well, the replay, I, I think, bears it out that that should be yeah. a, a penalty. I mean, O'Brien yeah. White does very well first to fight off the defender to get around him and then showing that little burst of speed right at the last second. I thought Sites was going to get the ball, no problem. So and O'Brien White gets a little toe on it. So did I. And I, I think the, the other half of this debate is not necessarily in this room. The other half of this debate is in Philly and on the message boards yep. and on Facebook. This They're not happy about this. it. Everybody's in an upheaval about it. And I'll tell you, if you're a Philly fan, you have to be thankful that Shavar Thomas didn't get called for a penalty earlier when he dragged him down, holding his wrist and pulling him down. So if you think that Sites call was 50-50, there's no way they could have let that go after letting the first one go. So, no. you, so you agree then it should have been a penalty? It, it definitely was a penalty. And I think the replay shows Sites missing the ball yeah. and hitting O'Brien White on the ankle. And there's nothing you can do there. But I think what you're saying is that it's actually credit to Toledo for noticing that the ball, the trajectory of the ball after the touch by uh, O'Brien White might have made the impression that Sites actually got to it. It, it could have fooled. And yeah. It could have fooled the referee. And it was bang, bang. I mean, when Sites gets there to when the ball leaves, it's, it's a bang, bang play. I think the assistant referee had a big hand in that. I think Toledo you know, looked over and saw the assistant referee waving his flag and said, all right, that's it. But then I would say, is Sites right for coming out in that, on that play? Should he have uh, stayed we home? Can, we can debate I'll, I'll Sites' even even performance say, the entire game. Should Sites be in goal for Philadelphia in the next game? Oof. Did I think Sites get a yellow card? We're going to leave it at no. that one. We're going to leave it at should Sites be in goal for Philadelphia on that one next week. That might be another debate here on the debate team.